<laughs> Let me start. Sure. First of all, th thank you for doing this, man. I, it's what is it like eight eight thirty eight in your world, which means you just did what like thirty shows today at Fox and then sat through a bunch of traffic you know, and now you're. It's you know what it is. I, I this is. Uh, are we on right now? Yes, we're on. Oh yeah. Oh okay, cool. So here's a really interesting thing about uh, when we talk about. Um, People working from home versus not working. There is, like, I trash people who want to work from home, but I have noticed how excited I am about work after I shower and get ready. And then by the time I get to work, it's all gone. It's like once, once right. I get, the, it, it's something about the commute, and we have to address this at some point. The commute changes your mentality. So, like, I... I love what I do, but uh, when I am getting to, by the time I get to work from where I am, which is, it took me an hour and 45 minutes today to get into Manhattan, wow. I hate everybody. I snapped on one of Jesse's producers. I mean, literally mm -hmm. snapped because they had booked me to do a segment where all the stories that we were going to talk about were on my show. So it's like, I can't do, like, you know what I mean? Because like, Fox has this problem yeah, yeah, yeah. where in the summertime, everybody does the same stories. So if you turn on one show on Fox, you get the three stories that are going to be on my show. But that's fine. But I shouldn't right. be the guest because then I have to repeat. So anyway, long story short is I snapped and then I apologized because uh, uh, I don't want that reputation of, like, getting really <laughs> angry and getting people fired. I hate that reputation. <laughs> But well, look, buried, <laughs> buried deep in the wisdom uh, and the unassailable truth of everything you just said was a little parenthetical at the beginning that I want to circle back on. Mm -hmm. Have we started? Oh, good, because this is interesting. <laughs> Meaning you weren't about to do or say anything remotely interesting until or, or unless you were sure oh, well, that it was being preserved for posterity. And I get it, dude. Yeah. I absolutely understand do you do not, like, that line. Yes, oh. do you, but you know it's Thanks. it's so it's funny because uh, people I don't think people understand that. And by the way, this sounds like moaning, but it's like I try to turn off my brain until I have to use it, but it's impossible. But I mean, I just babble, and you turn on the mic, and I continue babbling. Hmm. And you know what? Well, you well, know what turns me on? Mike. What? Mike Rowe. <laughs> this is a micro aggression. And you are a macro <laughs> talent. And together, we have ourselves a micro and a macro. We got a macro and a, and a micro. That's very funny. Here, I got to show you Oh, my you God. Something. You got to do that as a segment. What, what, what's that? I know. I'm this is what I was looking at. Oh. Right you on. Okay. So it's me on the set of Red Eye uh, 10 years ago, almost to the day. Yeah. And I, I just have to apologize, brother. I... I didn't know who you were. <laughs> I didn't know what the show was. It's I was so at funny. Fox making the rounds, yep. right? And as of course, we you're do. Not recording it, as you do, right? Yep. Just trying to figure out, you know, which hoop to jump through and not quite knowing if I was in Ernestville yes. or Irony Town, not quite knowing, right? And just realizing about halfway through this interview that you were doing the exact same crazy thing I was doing at QVC 10 years before that, mm -hmm. trying to stay sane in a, in a miasma of stuff. Yeah. Uh, try, try, trying to be different, right? And by the time I figured out really what you were doing on Red Eye, I, I, I was such a fan, and I, and I just... I have felt sad ever since that I didn't do the best interview of my life because you deserve oh, it. Oh, but you have, so this is funny because, so I have this problem of <laughs> mixing, well, I have a lot of problems. <laughs> this one is mixing people up. So when you were pitched to me, I said immediately, I don't like that guy. I thought you were somebody else. And I go, I don't like, why do I want him on? That guy's just going to trash Fox, blah, blah, blah. I thought that you were somebody else that began with Mike. And I do this a lot. Uh, I do this a lot where I am. And then the person shows up and I go, no, that's not the, that's not the guy that I, and I go, it's me. 
It's me. I get so many people wrong. You know, there were people I wouldn't have on the show because I had them. I had completely screwed up who they were, and I did. And then you show up, and I go, and I go, oh wait a minute, I know I this guy. <laughs> this guy's great. <laughs> this guy's great. Uh, and he's got a great voice. He's like this the whole time. I mean, my God, you probably picked up so many women just by opening your mouth, micro. It's like you're like you're like you're like. Xanax, your voice. It's just like so mm. restful. And it's like, oh, I could just listen to, th- why don't you just do a podcast where you read bedtime stories? Just lie in bed and listen to micro read. I, you can read the Dude. phone book. Actually, you should read the phone book He's because we it. need, <laughs> yes. I could, I could read your book. Um, I, I did read yeah. the phone book, yeah. actually, <clears throat> a short one. But yeah, I read it like, I don't know, maybe eight years ago and somebody put some very soothing like massage new age music under it with a with a cello in the background. I'm not the only one. So this is like this is a this is a phenomenon that other people. But you you I mean, it's a gift. You know, you have it. It's like you just put it. You just like kind of like. You know, it's it's great. You don't even have to, you know what? You don't even have to say anything intelligent, <laughs> micro. My voice, however, is horrifying. So I have to like punctuate it with ridiculous, absurd comments. I hate well, you. I <laughs> hate what you stand for. <laughs> that was a good one. You didn't, but on the positive side, yes. you didn't know it was me. <laughs> I didn't know it was you. And then you, sh- then, but you showed up and I go, oh my God, I know this guy. And I, I don't know, I'm trying to, figure out who I thought you were, but I've done this with comedians a lot uh, because everybody, I mean, if somebody's name is Mike with an R, it could be anybody. And I just remember, I go, this guy's like, a, I, and it was so funny because I pictured you differently, completely. Mm-hmm. And I was so absolutely wrong. So you didn't even know who I was and I had you pegged for the wrong person. And then you and I end up running off to Vegas for a quick wedding. <laughs> And they'll never take that away from us. I know, I know. I mean, we had it annulled, but it was the best three hours of my life. And we didn't even take off our clothes. And this was before gay marriage was allowed. I know. We were ahead of the curve. It's totally. Uh, and I don't mean that literally, if you know what I mean. But anyway, it was uh, it was quite a, a moment. And uh, you've been on our show a lot. You've been on The Five. Uh, uh, Fox should have hired you. <laughs> I kind of felt like they did for a while there. It was like stepping in gum. Oh, you know what? You I were too expensive. In. I bet you were too expensive, right? I, 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 am, ex- I, I am expensive. You should be expensive. Like you should be expensive. I am, I, I am but I'm not expansive. <laughs> and what happened was I got every time with Fox, yeah. right? They, so they call you. It's like the classic just the tip, yeah. all right? Somebody <laughs> named Jennings will call me and say, hey, I understand you're going to be in New York. Could you just come mm. by and do a quick hit maybe on, you know, on the five? And I say, sure. And the next thing I know, I'm, you know, Booked. I'm outnumbered yeah. for an hour. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then it's just back and forth. And they will, they will take your day. They will, they will, they will just <laughs> squeeze you dry. And, you, and it's like, because all of them are going like, he's in town. We can save on travel. That's it's like they go like oh my god they go it's like so all of a sudden I have a guest book for my show and then I look by the way you know who does who who, who, used to drive me crazy who I absolutely love is Vivek like Vivek so I get I get Vivek this is like a year two years ago I get Vivek on my show and I go this is great and then I look on the on the roster and then I look on the TV and he's on every single show and I go by the time it gets to eleven o'clock people are going to be so sick of him that I'll probably end up having to run for president. Because he can't. Which is why the producers over there, I mean, everything is a knife fight in a phone booth yes. with a guest. Yes. Like you're everybody's friend, but the minute you go on, right, back in the old days, Tucker, yeah. um, God forbid you pop up on Hannity, right? God forbid. You're not God, supposed I mean, to. It's, it's, you're not, no, yeah, you're not. because, of, I mean, it, the, here's the deal, too. I mean, it depends on what's going on, like summer. Summer means every story that you see is made up, right? Because like, uh, it's funny how news is manufactured and the people that manufacture the news when they're on vacation, you know, you're stuck doing, uh, should men be wearing shorts at work? We discussed this in the C block. 
You know, and then all of a sudden, it's in every show. Should men be wearing shorts or hats at work? That's a summer story because there's nothing going on. And and even, it's weird, even like big stories when they come, they're like, they still feel like, oh, we're just doing this because the everybody's at their house. They're at their house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right. Because they don't want to have their soul completely wrung out of them by the aforementioned commute. Yes. And everybody's navigating this this whole new thing yeah and it's still it's it's hard to sum up but i i had dinner with uh, vivek last week in memphis actually at freedom fest yeah where i half expected to see you pop up were you tempted had have you been to that thing yeah before? in fact i think i've done freedom fest eric i did freedom fest a couple times right i spoke there was that the one where they said they couldn't pay me <laughs> it sounds no, like Freedom Fest. This, the, this, the, okay, I won't, say, I won't say it's Freedom Fest, but it was libertarian. And mm -hmm. I got to tell you this story. Because can I tell this? I can tell this story. It's a couple years old. So um, Libertarian, Latin for there'll right. be no money. Yeah, but they go. But the, so the guy who was promoting it said, um, it was in Vegas. And he said, oh, you know, it's going to be great. You're going to meet so many great people and we're going to go out to dinner and it's going to be so much fun. And I said, uh, I have friends. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not flying to Vegas just to meet some people. And, and it's like, right. I don't think, I mean, and you know this, at a certain point in your life, if they can't improve upon the life that you're currently living, you're not gonna fly to it. You're not gonna go like, like, like I would rather stay home in my house by this man-made lake and relax than like, hey, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a steak dinner on the house at, the, at, you know, at uh, some like casino. It's like, that's not for me. 20 years ago, I would have loved it. I would have been like, wow, I, they're gonna pay for my ticket? And maybe it might be business class. And I get it, but at this point in my life, it's like, no, dude. You can't just try to charm me and say no money, and then I just said I'm not doing it, and then all of a sudden, when, all of a sudden, the wallet opened up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But when when did that happen, Greg? And and like, how does it change? Is it really all of a sudden, or is it like a slow burn frog in the boiling water, where you suddenly realize that a long list of stuff that you used to fantasize about having suddenly became some sort of awful consolation the, prize. The weird thing about it is, uh, I, th I mean, I guess like years ago, I probably would have envisioned these things as being marvelous. But once they happen, you don't feel that way anymore because you have other things going on in your life. So it's like in my 20s, if I was told that this was my life, I would, I would just want to snap my fingers and just erase the next two decades and just get there. <laughs> but the thing is, you, you lose things while you're yeah. gaining things. And so it's, you're, well, obviously time. I get these things, but I'm also older. I'm still good looking and, you know, I, I, I'm charming, but I lost a lot. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not the, the Greg that I was in my 20s or 30s. So you lose age. But, but you're, you're getting uh, compensated by uh, status. The status increases. Right. But when you have status, you don't know like anymore. It, well, if you're insecure, if you have status, you want to get up here. And I think that's unhealthy. I'm pretty much happy with what I am. But I get more. OK, this is where I become a prima donna. And I think you might feel the same way. It's about time. As, because, OK, let's say this. You know, you're. I'm closer to death than I was 20 years ago. So are you. Sure. So mm -hmm. time becomes this thing that you can actually feel. So you want uh, everything. You don't want to wait in lines because you can mm -hmm. hear it ticking. You can hear I'm just like, what could I be doing? Even if you were doing nothing instead, you're still hearing the ticking noise. And I think that that's the, the driving thing on status for status is eliminating delays, eliminate like, Airports, I mean, the, the key, like, okay, flying first class or business is, is preferable, not because it's more comfortable, but because of time and just being, and also I can't let, I can't let the population see me and coach. That would destroy them. <laughs> 
because they look up to me, Mike. They look up to me, Mike. And if they see me in coach, they're going like, what is it? What's going to happen for me if Greg's it's in coach? It's a lot of cognitive dissonance. <laughs> yes. Right. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot to process. But I, I knew you were going to say that because the amount of time I've spent, like, I think you could do a pretty thick, thoughtful book on what happens in the average brainstem around a boarding gate for, say, an American Airlines flight. And it's poorly marked. There's there are lanes, kind yeah. of, mm-hmm. right? And of course, you got boarding groups one, two, and three. But then you've got before that the halt and the lame, and the very old and the infirmed, and so forth and so on. And those in military, and those with two-year-old kids. And then you're in that status for that group one. But even that is gold and silver and platinum and 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 concierge key and global service and premier select. And it's it's become so incredibly slivered. codified. It's slivered. It's so slivered. slivered. And you know what? I right. want. When is it going to be? And now for the non-binary, uh, the non <laughs> the non-binary with learning disabilities. Uh, you know what I mean? Because like it's like put your hands together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. People are going to be like just waiting and not knowing where. where There's going to gonna look. be one person left, and it's the guy that has like one A. <laughs> But he just doesn't have any other attribute. He's no like box. a guy. No he's, box. he's got no box. But he worked like forty years, you know, in insurance, and now he's got first class. <laughs> and it's like, no, 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 sir, sir, sir. Unless you're a they, you have to stay over there. But it, you know, um, how crazy. There was some. How crazy that Southwest figured it out. Yes, and but, Southwest figured it out. Yeah. I, I, Bananas. Yeah. It's like everybody, it's like you have a very specific number. So now you got the, like the mob comes together and they're like, uh, I'm A7. Are you, yeah. a, are you an A? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm A4, right? So you stand there and everybody works it out. Yeah. Have you, you know? ever seen? Southwest, go figure. I don't know if you're a movie guy, but there was a movie that came out about 10 years ago called Snowpiercer. It's, oh, yeah. Yeah. So at the end of the world, it's frozen, and the surviving population is on a train that just yes. circles. And it, it naturally evolves into a class system. The message being that this is what happens, I guess. So you have this class of like the rulers, and then you got like, it's just, and so this guy is trying to make it through every class. And it's like, it's weird how we need some reason to uh, create these divisions. Because uh, maybe, I don't know, I don't know, but it, it, you feel, it's, so the divisions, you feel this thing in your body that something's not right. And I do think that there's an evolutionary biological revulsion to line cutting. I think that there's a reason why people can't, mm. can't explain why the border, why the border is important uh, uh, because you have an ant that lives in, uh, in uh, Eastern Europe who's been waiting patiently and yet somebody can just come over. Or somebody is a smash and grabber. You, you uh, work hard, you save your money, you go to Dwayne Reed or Walgreens, but somebody just walks in. So I think that what happens is all of the, all of the injustices have to do with people sensing line cutting, which is I guess another word for unfairness, but line cutting, for example, you want to get angry, you're in line anywhere to get to uh, getting to into a concert, right? You're in line and you see somebody in front of you holding a spot for their friends. And their five or six friends show up and there's this like, <gasps> it's like, I have to say something. Yeah. I have to I go, no, you have to go to the end of the line. But then you get in a fight. But I think that like they're in, among humans, there is a desire it's it also it's like you know what the another good one is when you're in line at an off ramp and this is so perfect because there's two things going on if you are in line on the off ramp and the other car comes in you don't want to let them in because they didn't right. they didn't wait like you did so you're like you've yep. been in that you've been in that line to get off exit a and doing my job yeah, and being the, a good citizen yeah and this person goes, but then flip it you're that guy and you feel really good. Like, like, like you made it. It's like, it's like, it's like quack, this, quack, this. I'm yeah. not waiting in this. These people are That's suckers. Right. These people are suckers for waiting Sheep. in this long line. Sheep. I'm just going to drive yeah. all the way up to the point where it shifts and you can cross that, that uh, painted barrier that's not really there. And you can just go, Wah! and then it's like, no, like 
People are angry, but what are they going to do? But you, you don't. It's so funny because humans can switch their rage. Uh, I, I would be the guy that would like bump that dude, but in this case, I'm the dude, so I'm like, hey, what's going on, dude? It's cool. <laughs> I've been both. I have been both of those guys. We all in have the same half hour. Yes. in the same half hour. Like, I will so break like, the same rule that I screamed yep. at within. Correct. You know, it's it happens in elevators. It happens everywhere.